Good morning, Misfits. This is the Unprepared Podcast by Misfit Athletics, where I come up with a topic before the show, but I don't tell either of these goons to... What the... F- did you just call me? Called you a goon. We t- typically call them Chucklehead 1 and 2. Unbelievable. Um, in hopes to elicit a genuine off-the-cuff conversation. Now, there's going to be two unprepareds within this unprepared. And I don't know, Damn, I, I had this idea the other day and then I forgot about it and then it just popped back into my head. The first unprepared is, who the fuck is Hunter Wood? Okay, so if you go to this guy's Instagram, <laughs> if you go to this guy's Instagram page, basically all you're going to get is braised pork, <laughs> surfboards, outer space. and outer space. Um, and what's funny about this is because you are, we, we joke around Hunter is the director of get shit done at misfit athletics. He's kind of a, well, you're no nonsense. Isn't actually true. Chucklehead, like a fucking goon. What do you got? Come on. You're enigma. enigma. You are less serious than I remembered you from back in the day. So, so, but anyways, the point of this is Hunter does a ton of shit here, but I don't know that the people, the, the, the misfit family knows who you are. Who is Hunter Wood? So that's that's round one of unprepared. You got that topic, Sherb. Yes. You, no, 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 no. Let you topic. run your suck. Go ahead. Who are you? <laughs> uh, I don't even know. I thought it was going to be like, what is it? That you say that you do here. <laughs> it's like, uh oh. Don't like, ask me that. Click clack. <laughs> so like it's 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 a mini it's a mini intro. It's a mini interview. Like you tell them tell them the story. How'd are you get involved you with in Misfit this? Athletics? Are you unprepared as well? Okay. Always. That's like my how'd you get how'd you get story. involved? How'd you get involved with Misfit Athletics? Wow. Then you disappeared. Then you came back. Yeah. All right. Uh I for the record, I can't write the description on this podcast. Um, yeah, so I, like, by sheer luck, wandered into CrossFit MF at 429 Warren Ave, which was no longer where we I thought we're you were going to give us a time that you walked in. I was like, <laughs> 325 was, in the afternoon like, on like Tuesday. It was, like, probably, like, 2 or so. It was like, overcast. So I guess maybe... Before that, I was in I was in college uh, at a Virginia Military Institute, and I was introduced to CrossFit by a friend there who played on the hockey team. He was also uh, he's a couple years older than me, getting ready to go into the into the Marine Corps. I was along a very similar path, so he was like, "You should try this," and it was it was Seal Fit. Um, and like, Easy. <laughs> I remember one of the first like <laughs> six hundred pull ups. Yeah, one of the first like <laughs> ten, 10 rounds of Fran. First workouts like I was doing at the. Fat and fat. So I'm doing CrossFit. I did it at like a commercial gym for a little while in the summer. And then I, uh, ended up going to get my L one, uh, through school. We, we were like a friend of mine and I were like, Hey, we want to start up a, cl- a CrossFit club. Will you pay for us to get our L ones? Um, which is, you know, saves a student a thousand dollars. So they, they helped us out with that. And then over the summer, I, just happened to wander in. I was, I just kind of Googled CrossFit gyms and there are a handful. There were at least were a handful in the area when we, uh, at that time in 2012, 12 or 11, I think 12. Um, and was it, so had Misfit Athletics been created yet? Cause October 2012 it was, was it, no. So it was, bef- one. it was before that ended up coming into CrossFit MF, um, got my kind of chops in by, I asked if I could shadow a little bit, but I was getting ready to go to officer candidate school. So I kind of wandered in was like, Hey, is there a, is there a spot for me to either coach? I'm, I'm getting my L one or, or I got it. I'm actually waiting for the test results. I'm pretty sure I passed it. And in a couple of weeks, I'm actually going away, uh, for a couple of weeks to officer candidate school for the Marine Corps. Can I come back and coach? Um, so I kind of, I did that, came back, started coaching, and that was right around probably the time. That was the summer before we like officially launched Misfit Athletics. And it was kind of like uh, I was athletic enough and the sport was young enough that I, I was re- like because I could do pretty much everything. It was like, oh, you're you you. Yeah, you're a coach, but can also be like a you can might also be competitive. You should do this thing that we're about to launch. Do you remember Misfit Athletics? Do you remember your Fran time or your L1? I think it was 252 
because you told me in one of our first interactions ever because I was doing Fran. Yeah. Or a t-shirt. You were there the first time I ever did Unbroken Fran. And it was like... Oh, really? Yeah. I remember. I very specifically remember watching it. And you... I was positive you were lying. I was like, who is this fucking kid? <laughs> I Also, we hadn't... I'm like, really, oh, yeah, you just started CrossFit whenever ago and you did a two blah, think, blah, blah, I don't Fran. think we had had like an interaction before that. Either. No. This is actually the story that I... When we... A couple of weeks ago when we were doing like the 10-year anniversary workout for yeah. MF, I was like... Hey, tell like, regardless of how long you've been here, tell everybody like one memory if you have it. And I was like, actually, one of the first things I remember is Drew was in the corner of the gym doing Fran. I don't think it was class. I don't think like you were just kind of doing your own thing. And Kyle like, Sykes screamed in my face every rep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I was like over in the corner, but I hadn't really met Drew yet because you were still also working like your full time job and weren't at the gym all the time. Uh, so I had, I didn't really know him. I was just like watching him do Fran in the corner. And I was like, I, I think I was pretty sure I was cheering you on and no, you trolled the shit you. out of me and told me you had like a one second Fran time. Or I was, I was like, like, someone get this loser out of yeah. here. <laughs> so Turns anyway, out he wasn't lying, by oh, the way. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't lying, but I'd, I'd done Fran before, but anyway, did the, yeah, I, and, and I just started kind of coaching. Uh, and also like that was also a kind of a period when the gym CrossFit MF, like the affiliate and Misfit Athletics, were, uh, all, were poorly separated. I guess we'll we'll say that. Like we've talked about it in coaches' podcasts and stuff. But we had, um, as Misfit Athletics was gaining a little bit of traction, the whole like idea was cool. I guess we weren't weren't very big yet, but affiliate members were just like, well, this is the fucking coolest thing ever because everybody's back squat went up six hundred pounds in like three weeks. But um, we. I, I did that. I was definitely more athlete than coach. And then, um, kind of did the, I had basically like one shot, so to speak, to qualify for regional. Skitty, skitty, skitty. Um, I, that was, oh man, I'm getting my timeline. The story is people are not listening to the story. Fast forward, ended up going back to school and then, uh, I graduated in 2013 and I had a long kind of layover between the end, between when I graduated and when I started my active duty time in the Marine Corps. And for, for people who don't know you basically to be an officer, you need to have a four year degree and what most programs, what most colleges do is like you graduate college and then you commission in the Marine Corps or you commission in the branch of service, meaning you become an, you're an, you're now qualified to be an officer. And then usually pretty shortly after within like a couple weeks or a month or sometimes even less, you immediately go into kind of your, your basic officer training. And it, it's different depending on what branch you're in for the Marine Corps. It's called, uh, the basic school or TBS. And because of basically because of manpower and logistical things in the military, I had like a 14, 12 or 14 month kind of layover where I'm not active duty. So I'm not getting paid. Um, but also like, I know exactly when I'm going to start like my full-time job as a Marine officer. And so it's like, Oh, I can't. And that segment is when you like really actually got involved with Miss Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that gap was kind of like came back. Hey, like now that I, I have about a year, do you guys have up, can I, can I work here often enough to make money to like make money bet- for that interim period? So I'm coaching, but also training. And that's kind of the, that was the year that I, I really, really worked hard to try to qualify for regionals because 2014 open, uh, was also kind of that, like, I guess maybe like the tipping point for misfit athletics when we sent like a whole shitload of athletes to regionals, uh, including, including Sherb and, and a bunch of the other coaches and athletes at CrossFit MF, which was pretty cool. Um, so I did that. And then like literally halfway through the open, I did two of the open workouts in Portland, one of the open workouts in New York city, and then the remaining two in Virginia. So that kind of like tracing my path down South to, to the military, uh, to where like, uh, the basic school is at in Quantico. So and they actually HQ said no to everyone in every scenario. Like you couldn't even ask them a question before they'd say no <laughs> or just not respond yeah. to you. And they actually were really cool. They let you switch regions essentially. Yeah. I mean, I call, I email or I emailed them and I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be, by the time regionals rolls around, I'm going to be here. Uh, I'm going to start the open in this 
place, but I'll end it here. Like, where do I sign up? And they're just like, sign up for the, put yourself in the mid Atlantic. So, uh, I qualified, qualified there while I was kind of starting TBS, which is, which is like, was a little bit hectic because those first couple weeks at TBS, uh, are, are very, very long days, uh, both like administratively and just, it's kind of like a, like a little mini kick in the nuts. Um, so doing the open workouts, like you got one chance to do it on the weekend in an empty gym with like a random gym owner, which was, was exciting in its own, (laughs) its own aspect. So (laughs) like, and then I, I stayed kind of at the, not to bore people to death, but I tried to stay involved with misfit athletics. Um, like as I kind of bounced around from Virginia to North Carolina to California and then back here, it was just like, Hey, how can I, how can I stay involved? And that was primarily through remote coaching to start. And then for a while I was doing the, um, and still, still am to an extent doing the age group, age group program and stuff like that, but just kind of doing what I could remotely to stay involved, uh, and, and just kind of be part of the, the crew. So the, the the reason there's a couple of reasons why I bring this up. One is because like within our within our community, there's like a lot of clout that's put on your like how many Instagram followers you have or like like where you're at with <laughs> Damn, that. We suck. Yeah. You either had to be essentially in all of the videos for six, seven years. Like Turb was. Everyone Everyone know everyone that follows Misfit Athletics. My following knows, still sucks though. Just in case how you many guys followers are wondering, you got? I don't know, ten, <laughs> twelve. Well, people get so annoyed when you post the same story twice in a row that they unfollow you. Um, so <laughs> noted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning this Instagram thing. Damn, so twenty six hundred sure. So good. PR. Do you have Do you have a thousand? No. Damn it. Come on, guys. After what today, is it? at Hunter at MF Sherb. <laughs> that's your. That's yeah. yours. Yeah. So. I, I bring it up because of that a little bit, but because you either someone knows you because you post a ton of shit on your social media or because you were or weren't in the videos um, for, you know, this like a large hiatus. And it's funny because like the other reason is more from like a business standpoint, like building businesses is really fun running businesses isn't quite as fun. <laughs> like you have to learn how to make running a business, building a business kind of a thing. Got to like sort of reevaluate. And Hunter was the first like big leap that we made to say, we literally don't have the money to pay him, but we're going to bring him in and hope that it moves the needle to the point where we can sign his checks <laughs> and give them to him. They don't like bounce going into his account. So, um, it's kind of funny how that works. I just think it's weird that it's really all about like public persona versus what someone actually does for the business. And like Hunter, like we write your programming together. Like Hunter is a, a huge part of the programming. I'm a little bit more on the like big picture side, you know, building templates and whatnot. And Hunter's a little bit more in like the nuts and bolts, your day-to-day like conditioning stuff. And I think it's, kind of funny that depending on what you do in social media, like versus real life, someone may or may not have any idea who's writing their programming and who's, you know, you know, has these articles and whatnot. Cause at the end of the day, like a lot of people probably think of us as misfit athletics before individuals. And like, it's just interesting to me that like you're in the trenches daily and someone may or may not know that yeah. yeah there. No, I mean it's I mean it's it's certainly not the worst thing in the world. Like I don't doesn't like doesn't bother me and I I also am just not I wouldn't I mean, say I'm not none on of social us are media. great at personal social media. I'm terrible. Yeah. You have to deal yeah. with it so much on a business level that like all four of us in this room right now, like Ted's behind the camera, like you you really kind of give up on your personal account unless you're thinking of it as a business account when you have like we all of us can literally toggle through six, you know, five or six social media accounts and you just, you don't want to be on there. Yeah. I think like in that way, in the social media stuff, it's, it's to me, it's like I, one, nobody, nobody's going to find what I post all that intri- Like you either will or you won't, but it's very not CrossFit related. You're and I've actually also posting like, what Instagram was supposed to be when it yeah, started. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I try to, I, it, there was like, I would say that since 
becoming like full time and being back here, I, I actually deliberately at one point, like purged my social media of CrossFit stuff because right. it's just like, that's like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I love CrossFit. I, I wouldn't be here, both the competitive side and the affiliate stuff. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, but also just being around it all the time. If I'm literally just, I want to be, I want to be mindless on my couch. I don't want to necessarily be scrolling through Instagram, looking at thrusters and pull-ups. So fair. Uh, I did that, but I still like, it is funny. I actually like, I'll comment on people. Like if they ask questions on the Misfit Athletics posts and stuff, I'll like comment. And it's like my, my photo is like, eight-year-old me in like a hockey uniform, like <laughs> answering, like answering their <laughs> question, it's, answering their very specific question, like hopefully intelligently in a way that helps. But I, I'm like, huh, I wonder if they have any idea that I like, I like work for Misfit Athletics, right. not that I'm just like some yeah. loyal follower who's like trying to help you out. You're right. like a, like a pie may kind of person. Like if you know, like if you know what you're looking for and like you're looking for a good coach or someone with good information or a good resource, oh, like see. if you know enough, you would come to Hunter. If you want someone with lots of Instagram followers, you might not be getting as good a product as an answer from that person. So like, I look at you as someone who may not be really forward facing on social media, but like, if you know enough about the sport of CrossFit and you know kind of the workings of how things get done, especially around the gym, for example, like they're gonna come to you for an answer. Do you have to carry? Does, do you have to carry the water up the steps to meet Hunter? I see him doing the, the <laughs> five inch punch, <laughs> two inch punch. For those, whatever of, the, it is. For those of you that, that don't know who Pi May is, um, Kill Bill Volume Two is well, this is one of the best movies ever made. But he is also one of the best characters in one of the best movies ever made. Little fact: he is also same actor as also the sheriff in that movie. So you've got like he's supposed to be. Like they don't look anything alike. One of them's supposed to be Asian, and one of them's supposed to be like Texas, huh. like like didn't know that like white bread sheriff. But it's the same actor. Huh. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, just so you know. I, I think about the you know, <laughs> the social media, know. the social media <laughs> presence, and being like obviously how you can get your information out to the world or public. But like you're not necessarily the person that's going to go out of their way to to do that. But if someone comes to you with a question, like if I had a question about training, you're the person I would go to or drew the person I go to, because I know you care enough about that stuff. Even if you don't put it out into the universe that you do that and you prefer to have that more on like a localized level with people kind of face to face versus you know, like social media. Yeah. I, I definitely that, that piece of it at the face to face thing, which is seems counterintuitive because we're obviously a, a basically a digital, a, a digital <laughs> a media company. Yeah, absolutely. And answering like, it's even, even our affiliate athletes, they'll, they'll probably be the first one to tell you that I, I'm not the like fastest to respond to like, Hey, how do I modify this workout? The affiliate workout today? Like, I, I apologize. I just don't, <laughs> it's, it's just not like staring at my phone all day is something I do unwillingly and I try to avoid it. Um, but anyway, like the point is, is I, I definitely like that kind of more personal aspect to it. It feels like I don't know. It feels fake. Like when it's, when it's out there and it's just like, I don't necessarily want to be inundated with like the DMS of like, Hey, what do I do? What do I think? Like, I don't know. It's just like, I don't, I don't know you all that well. Like I there's feel, a crusty I feel like old bag that I the, remember from 2012. He's still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, it's just like, cause I, I, I think my, well, you are, that's the, the thing though. The, you can't say that cause you already do it. You just do it under a different name. So you would essentially be opening up because you answer a shitload of questions all the time. That's true. But I, I think from a personal... <laughs> you just don't want them the, in your personal the, account. My my personal thing is that I want to... I don't want to say... I don't I don't want to sound like, a, like, like arrogant or something, but I want to be able to give people like a solid answer to questions and include things like, this is why, or like, I want to get to know you a little bit more. So like my affiliate athletes, like I know them really well, so I can give people like a quick one-off answer. Right. But when people ask me a question on whether it's our like help desk platform or through Insta, like the rare Instagram message that I get, uh, it's like, I, well, I don't know you. Like, what are you, like, what are your goals? Like, how are you feeling? Why are you asking me this? Like I, to me, it's more overwhelming to, to go through that flow chart in my head. Like I, I don't want to give just like a generic blanket answer to, to things. Like I want to be able to help somebody more specifically. And like one of, one of the things that I just try to do is I've, I've tried to do fewer things better 
like as opposed to kind of crossfitting my job, like being okay at a lot of different things. And I, especially when it comes to helping athletes, it's like, I want to, like, I want to give you like kind of that more personal answer right. that, that applies to you that can actually help you. Cause you typically have to ask more questions. Right. Get, and then yeah. when it's digital, it's like, I'm sorry, man, like I'm not going to go back and forth with you on Instagram DMing you like remote coach style. Like, I don't know. I, it's more that I care. I care a lot and I want to be able to help people specifically. Right. But that's difficult to do when it's like, I don't know who you are. It's, yeah. That's fair. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you thousands of you out there are coached by someone. His name is Hunter Wood. Um, and there you go. Hi. That's him. That's me. Are you guys ready for topic one point A, B, <laughs> C? <laughs> The athlete side hustle. So I want Ooh, I like to this. run a marathon. I want to. Uh, I didn't think that was what it was. Have an Oli lift. <laughs> what you think? It, I don't know. I'm paused. <laughs> what would you think it was? No, I thought it was like I want to be an athlete, but I need to get a side job. No. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, you're, but your side job is marathon runner. So okay. So we have a we have a whole spectrum here. We have. I quit. I'm a lifter now which you never become a lifter, just so you know. Um, and then all the way out to, I don't quit, but it's the off season. I'm, I either just want to try this for fun. You know, I want to do a triathlon or like let's bias cause there's a weakness. Um, so I just want, like I, I get these questions a lot and then I actually work with athletes specifically that want to check off some of these boxes. So like, let's talk about it. Yeah, to me, I, I actually love this idea that athletes would say, I'm going to take a venture down something I'm not comfortable with. You know, there's a decent amount of our sport, especially when you're trying to perform at the highest level where you have to be able to perform on demand. So like in the past, I've worked with athletes remote coaching who are like, hey, I'd like to sign up for a weightlifting meet. What do you think? And I'm like, I love that idea because not only do you have to be very dedicated and focused to something, which is a lesson I'm trying to teach them at all times with their training, like training to be successful, you need to have a sustainable, continuous, consistent plan to be able to get the adaptation you're looking for. And then two, if you're looking to compete in the sport of fitness, you're at some point in your journey gonna have to perform on a stage in front of people at some point. So are you able to go out there, know yourself enough to know what you're able to execute and then do it when it matters? So to me, that's a great example, like just off the cuff with weightlifting, but same thing goes for, Hey, I want to try a triathlon or I want to run a half marathon or I want to do an adventure race. And they're like, do you think it's okay coach? And it's like, yeah, absolutely. Like that's great to put yourself in situations where you're not familiar. And if you look at the best in our sport, they are constantly doing that. I mean, you look at, you know, the cross the games athletes signing up for, you know, sprint tries and moderate tries and full triathlons because they know at some point, if they go to the highest level, they will be tested in that capacity. So to me, you know, I, without saying like just fully commit to that completely and not do any CrossFit, that might be a bad advice. Like say, I'm not gonna do any CrossFit for 12 months and just gonna be a marathon runner. When I come back, I'll be a better CrossFitter. That probably won't work, but going headstrong into something and saying, hey, two days a week, I'd like to dedicate this to running and swimming because I wanna do a sprint try. Absolutely on board for it because I do think that putting yourself into a situation where you're doing something very focused for a short amount of time is something we do all the time on our blog already. We focus on Olympic lift for, you know, the squat clean for a phase, and then we focus on the snatch for a phase. So there's definitely a lot to having very focused uh, periods of time, but just know that you don't wanna, in my opinion, commit all to one and neglect everything else. Cause we've talked about the weightlifter, crossfitter thing for years and years. Like, yeah, it's nice to think that if you went and did a weightlifting cycle and come back, you'd be a better crossfitter, but you'll probably just be stronger a little bit and be missing the other things. Yeah, unless you're Sam Briggs, um, it's probably not the best <laughs> idea in the world. I, I think the, to me, the psychology, the psychological aspect of shifting gears a little bit, I, I kind of think, so I think about it as like when I was a kid in high school, um, like every time I went out to play, to play a hockey game, like you get that, like those like butterflies and stuff like that. And at some point, um, especially with CrossFit, like that can wear off a little bit. Or if you're only competing so often, maybe it's only once a year in the open or you're only doing like one additional qualifier. Um, like it doesn't, it's not necessarily negative, but not having that like 
that feeling of like competitive competitiveness and like actually knowing when to turn it on. And we try to incite people to do that during test week, like grab a training partner, like battle it out. And there is a little bit of that competing on a daily basis. But like when you actually are putting kind of like some eggs in a basket and are going after that with the intention of like performing, I think the, the adaptation that occurs and the things that you learn about competing are, are invaluable in the sport. You as, learn a lot as about far yourself. As, yeah, you learn a lot about yourself. And it, and it, it's a lot, just even just consider like if you drop into a different gym, like the environment change is different. Like all of those things create uh, what I would say is like a beneficial level of stress. It's like, oh, I don't get, no, you don't get your pull-up bar. You don't get like the, the your favorite barbell and stuff right. like that. You, you change those things up. And then when we're talking about making it a completely different sport, like, I, I would still argue like CrossFit is the best training program probably for whatever you're trying to undertake um, with, and then we can just bias that a little bit. That's what you, we would do for a professional athlete. Like you're st- you still need the GPP that CrossFit provides, but right. yeah, if, if you're a football player, we're probably, we don't necessarily need to like work on handstand walking, but it, it's still like the, how far how far off the path is too far off the path though. So like you talked about, going a year and only training for a marathon. Obviously that's quite an extreme. And yeah. you talked about, why don't we just bias this a little bit, but like, let's say an athlete, and I guess it is athlete dependent too. So, so we could be talking about a games level athlete that wants to bias a phase to get better at something specifically. That's not that crazy. That's, that's fairly normal. Um, especially like when they've been doing it for so long that they, you know, like mentally maybe need a little bit of a break from that situation. But then there's the consideration of if you're halfway or something to your journey to being a games athlete and you step off the path, like how many people pass you sort of a thing. So how far off the path is too far? And then like, obviously the qualification the, of the athlete matters. Yeah. I think the the qualification matters and the, the overall goal of the athlete matters. Like I, the, when you, f- the, f- when you first said the topic outside of like, get a job to be an right. athlete, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. second thing I thought of was the athlete who doesn't have a great season or something and right. says, ah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go be a weightlifter and six weeks, they're a weightlifter. And then they come back into the CrossFit gym and they're not as fit. And right. then it's like, it's, what are, what are you trying to, what are you trying to get at? Is it, are you actually, I want to compete in the U S open weightlifting, you know, weightlifting competition. Right. Do I want to have the best snatch and clean and jerk that I have? Do I want to be a marathon runner? Do I, you know, or is it, I'm burnt out on doing CrossFit. I want to steer towards something else in the meantime, or like, I, I was hoping things went better than they did this season. They didn't go great. I need to I need to step out of the gym and focus on something else. Right. It's just a throwback mentality. You look at <clears throat> you look at what Greg was trying to tell us years and years ago, like when he was trying to get people to understand that R. you R. shouldn't R. like weightlift on Monday, do cardio on Tuesday, do accessory on Wednesday, but you should be mixing these things all the time. That to me is the perfect example. Like even when you do decide to bias, let's say I'm gonna swim three days a week because I want to do a sprint try, like Yes, you should swim, but like if you avoid things completely for an extended period of time, you're asking to come back and be deficient in those things. So like that like throwback mindset just seems so awry from, you know, what the original like doctrine of CrossFit was and that people again picked out the parts that they liked of the original like like manifesto of Greg or whatever it was with CrossFit but then Guilty. decided like I'm going to throw the rest of this trash away. Like, you know, I'm I'm sinking my teeth into this part. I definitely buy in, but the rest of this like not necessarily. And to be fair, like a hundred percent of it being true is not accurate, but like there was a lot of really good information there that, you know, he tried to essentially warn people against doing, but at the, you know, expense of their own ego or the thought that they might know better, like still said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to try and see what happens. I think it's also an important distinction from what you're saying though, is because we would argue that someone coming in off the streets, who's like, I want to run a marathon. Like let, let's say they're 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 a reasonably athletic, just kind of reasonably fit person. Does like the the normal fitness stuff isn't exposed to CrossFit. Say I want to run a marathon. I want to do really well in a marathon. We would probably tell them, okay, we'll you know we'll maybe have a plan or something that certainly gets your mileage up. But 
I want you to come in and back squat some too. Like mm-hmm. I want you to come in and power clean, deadlift and back squat. If we have a CrossFitter, someone who's already got a reasonable level of GPP under their belt, then we're more, we might be more willing to sacrifice. Yeah. Your, your one rep max back squat's probably going to go down right now, like well, for the next 12 then, weeks or whatever. Then that becomes a, a function of like, are, are you missing a skill component to whatever you're trying to work on? Are you missing just the time, the hours, you haven't put the hours in yet to get good at those things? Or is there somewhere like in the middle? Because like you're saying with a CrossFitter, you probably have a good baseline of GPP. What's keeping you from being able to do this event the way you want to do it? Is it your headspace? Is it your, you know, energy capacity? Like, are you not really good with long distance and you want to work on that? Or you maybe really terrible short distance and you want to work on that? Like there becomes more of a conversation than just like, Hey, I I want to be like healthier and better at running. Like, no, you want to work on something very specific. So there needs to be a slight tailoring towards that event, but not so far into it that you just throw everything else away. Right. Well, we joke a lot about the weightlifter thing because we've gotten that message so many times. Like you're checking in on an athlete, they had a rough season and like you get confused about the idea that becoming an actual high level weightlifter is just as hard as becoming a high level crossfitter. You just might not breathe heavy as often. And like, it's like a grass is greener on the other side sort of situation. Well, when you go to the other side, if the grass is always greener, then it was, it's greener again now (laughs) over just where you were. And you know, that's sort of how like that proves to you that that doesn't make any sense. Um, the, the quote that, that I love about this topic is every time you quit, someone else gets your prize. So you're working towards something, you get 60% of the way there, you've worked your ass off. If you had continued 60 to hundred percent, you, you know, you knock out that final 40%, where would you have ended up? You would have ended up somewhere and probably somewhere better, somewhere pretty close to your goal. Someone else has to take that place. Someone ha- else has to come in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventy yeah. fourth. Zero sum game. So, so the idea that you are going to now completely pivot and end up over in this other place, you're starting over. And again, someone else got that. You worked hard to get that thing, and and it's more that conversation's more would be its own episode of like personally, what is going on with you, like. You, you keep quitting early. Is it because you don't want to say that you want to come in first and then come in second? Like, what is that all about? But when it comes to the topic that we're talking about today, for me, it's about like, how far are we trying to go into that, into that other realm? Because there's biasing a program. Um, but what happens when you bias a program is you're still filling the rest of the bucket with something else. And if you're like, really hoping to like you know, win a race or win a lifting meet. The problem is we talk about that thing with the gas tank. You've only got so much in there. So you have to be wildly strategic about, you know, if you're, you got to lift first and then you got to do your conditioning. And even though you did your conditioning second, what was your central nervous system like for your lift again the following day? So, so when, when people are really trying to figure out like, Hey, I want to use a triathlon just to get my aerobic systems better. Then that's super simple. That's just a buy. You just bias a program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just make sure that, you know, the, the rule of thumb is pretty easy. Make sure you work on something about three times a week and you're going to get, especially as a CrossFitter, you're going to get a lot better at it. But then there's the other thing of like, are you really trying to win or something? And that's where you have to find that delicate balance of, don't get too far off the path because then you come back, you're going to have just as much work to get back to where you were. But also like, again, if you ruin your lifting program with too much other stuff, you're, you're not going to win. So, so for the people listening, it's really about deciding, like, am I trying to make like obliterating a weakness fun? Because again, that's just a bias. Or am I like, I want to go see what I can, I'm going to throw my hat into this ring and see what I can do. We do still think a GPP program is going to be the best thing to get you there, but it's not just a bias. You have to be ready every single time you either go to work on your triathlon thing, or you go to pick up a barbell that you have the maximum amount of energy to put into it. You have meaning and context behind the training. You have to know what's important to you so that you allocate resources appropriately. I mean, this is something I've talked about. You know, I have an athlete who lives in Iceland and 
for the longest time struggled with the time domain of sub seven. So like, you know, this is necessarily biasing in another event, but like realized a lot of the training turned into interval work. And a lot of it was just really nasty, gross, like super, what we call gassy workouts where like you're sucking wind and your legs feel like they're going to fall off and you'd rather be dead than, you know, try to get up off the ground and do another bike sprint. But like that type of intensity and that type of focus for, you know, he's been working on this for multiple years, but made tremendous strides. And like you said, putting in three hard days a week of very focused training because the context was, I want to be a CrossFit Games athlete, right? You want to be a CrossFit Games athlete, you have to do what they do and you need to have capacity in every single thing. You can't have this glaring weakness in your, you know, your capacity. So why not pour all the energy into focusing on that one thing? And yeah, you might lose some of the things that you really love to do, you know, not doing double unders and toes to bar and, you know, 20 minute AMRAP so you crush everybody else in. But like, guess what? you don't need work in that. You need to work on what's specific to you, which is, again, increasing that work capacity in that very short time window. And that's that leap that needs to be made mentally is different is not better or worse. It's just different. Like, and it's hard to convince yourself that that's the case, but it, it's it's a just a reallocation of resources, right? Yeah. Like there are people that cannot stand to do sprint workouts that can, you know, mentally stay, you know, steal trap on a one hour run. Like, they run hard the whole time. They're in pain the whole time. They don't care. But then it doesn't matter. you do two bike sprints and I don't want to do this anymore. This is bullshit. I don't fucking mm. like it. This isn't going to mm. work. That sort of thing. And people get stuck in those modes of different being either or better or worse. And it doesn't really work that way. Yeah. That like that black and white mentality is super dangerous. Just like as a general life lesson, everybody, there you go. There's your nugget for the day, but like <laughs> hunter's uh, nuggets, hunter's nuggets. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Instagram following just dropped off even more. One um, follower. Or maybe it increased. Um, In this room, that could mean so many different when, things. <laughs> when, when you were talking about biasing, when I think of the, when I think of kind of the two paths, you're either, are you a crossfitter? who's trying to improve a weakness, like what you said, that's where we bias. That's where we keep the general, like kind of the underlying, if, if I had that, if that was my remote athlete, I keep the underlying misfit athletics programming and skew, or maybe just make sure that they do the aerobic pieces, you know, four, four or five times a week. And right. they're, they're so that that's how I would say biasing. If you have an athlete and maybe this is more like a very personalized programming thing, you get an athlete who either comes in off the street or you're a CrossFitter who says, Hey, I legitimately want to train for the Boston marathon. Like I have, and you already know that they have a pretty good foundation of, of GPP to me, that's when it, it becomes more like, okay, we're going to actually the program that we're going to build off of is maybe a little bit more a marathon program. And then we supplement that with CrossFit. Um, so it, it depends on who, if you're, if you're a CrossFitter for most people listening, that's going to, that's you. We we're biasing things a little bit. We're just giving you a slight, a slightly bigger dose of the thing that you don't, or that you want to work on versus an entire different program because we've seen that like the weightlifting thing it's like oh i'm gonna take 12 weeks and do this like weightlifting program like you came back strong as fuck but you can't move and then like by the time your gpp gets back like the lifts have gone back down Breathing a little heavy bit. is non-negotiable it's like, yeah it's well, just it's during just any of these no, no bypassing you're, you're gonna say too, too to the effect like you know what we're talking about you know we're trying to make the crossfit traditional model fit your your training like needs like if you're looking for general health, yeah, CrossFit's awesome. It's going to make sure that you kind of check off going short, going medium, going long, going light, going moderate, going heavy and mixing up the modalities. But if you're at the highest level and you want to, you know, get to aromas, get to any one of those high level competitions, like you need to be prioritizing things that are very specific to you. Right. And I wish we could live in the old school, like throwback. It's always going to be great that we have, you know, the ability to just do you know, couplets and triplets and short, you know, intense pieces. But like, you know, that old school mentality, while it's great for health and wellness, you see that and you try to stick with that, you're going to be, the sport's going to leave you behind, right? You do need to spend a good chunk of your life in those couplets and triplets and hitting those. But for the most part, like once you have established a base and you want to be competitive in this aspect, there are going to be things that are very obvious to you that you should spend your time doing, not necessarily just saying, Oh, well, if I, if I'm, if it's meant for me and I'm have the, you know, the genetic potential, I'll just keep doing this and eventually it will work for me. And that's just like beating your head against the wall. I'm like, that's not going to get you anywhere. That also too, like you get, you get too far down a rabbit hole of, of extreme bias. You start to get like 
the the nagging like overuse injuries and stuff like that like you get you get people who are like i want to train for a marathon and all of a sudden their running goes up you know 300 percent relative right. to the the five rounds of 400 meter run interspersed with and luckily we don't have to do that you learn no. that certain machines can you know yeah. translate back yeah and a lot of times like it, it, the other thing too is a lot of times with these these questions it's not a matter of like there there are very few i would say the extreme examples there are very few athletes that i can think of that are just like i need to get so much stronger that i need a i need like a completely different weightlifting program i need to get so much stronger that i need to start taking proper recovery all in one post-workout nutrition solution protein carbs electrolytes all in the same bottle you can head to properfuel.co and use the code word misfit to save on your first order word <laughs> i i completely derailed my train of thought because i was going to go into mine you lose <laughs> and i lost there's i tried to set mine up like five times very, <laughs> time. very few athletes back to my thought you even said throwback in your last fuel. <laughs> co. um <laughs> Very few athletes that need to get so much stronger, so much more proficient in the Olympic lifts are probably the most common one that I need to I need to omit parts of my GPP. Nor are there are so many athletes who are so their aerobic engine is so poor that they need to completely ditch all of the lifting. Although I'd say that's more if you if you brought an NFL player into the gym, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not I'm not too worried about your power clean. Like let's. Right, dude. You're James Townsend doing you're like four or five for, hand cleans for reps for thirty minutes. But <laughs> it, it's it's most people live in that middle. They're the the super fast twitch athletes on the one end, the super slow twitch on the other. Who who legitimately have to we have to get creative a little bit with how we how we program that sort of stuff. But it's 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 really kind of a fool's errand to put yourself so far out there that says I need to I need to ditch what I'm doing currently and completely switch it up because like you said like if you ever plan to come back to where you started you came from like you might be a little bit more disappointed like yeah your your back squat went up but those 95 pound thrusters the all 100 reps of those didn't get any didn't get a whole lot easier that baseline to not have that happen to you is basically crossfit games level like you have to be that good. You have to be positive. You have to be the type of athlete that's wondering where you're going to place the games, not if you're going to make it to the games. Right. That's the kind of athlete that can take a little hiatus if they have to. You know, you have an injury, like there are athletes that have, you know, serious injuries. Speaking of that, I, I was thinking the other day about how crazy it is that CrossFit is deemed unsafe and yet we when do you ever see, when is Matt Fraser ever like, I can't compete this season because of whatever, like every day in professional baseball, football, ho- like people are out for two years, year and a half, two years. Yeah. It's a torn this, it's a torn that, that like, to me that, that like, like never happens in our sport. Yeah. Like, like minor injuries are one of those ones that's annoying where you get it taken care of or like right after the season's over. But like, I, I think it's hilarious that that's the idea. That's the public like, and I'm talking to CrossFitters right now, so I'm not like <laughs> blowing their mind. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, but you have to think like those high level athletes just have every aspect of their life really well dialed in their recovery. They're rubbing that CBD, that pure spectrum CBD salve on their, on their joints after, you know, after a tough training day or taking that tincture to help them fall asleep. Uh, and if you guys are interested in grabbing a hold of some, some of that pure spectrum CBD.com with the code word misfit gets you a little bit of discount on that. Give Keep your dollars. Uncle Sam doesn't need them. You do. Uh, but the like, yeah, you, you get the athlete like, oh, all of a sudden I jacked up my running game 300% and like my ankles, knees and hips are, are debilitated. Right. But it doesn't happen as often. And yeah, I mean, and saying. that's that that's that lifestyle piece. And that's why it matters so much that you're you're asking yourself these questions of which direction you're trying to go in. Um, and I don't know. I mean, we are we're kind of drawing a line in the sand to say that if you're not anywhere near where you want to be, that if you go beyond biasing, if you go to an overcorrection, it's probably going to hurt more than it's going to help in the long run. The odds that you are so far from where you want to be and that the so far is one very specific thing 
is just it's to me you're playing that what if game for a what if that doesn't exist like you're gonna have a hard time finding somebody who is who their crossfit engine is so fucking good but their lifts are so low like their ta- their scores and times and stuff are so good with a light barbell but their their lifting is so poor that they need to completely derail themselves or in the other direction like it it this, almost doesn't exist. This concept, like we can't stop there. This concept is so important, so incredibly important. I get messages all the time, nonstop from people that say, I've got my met cons fairly close to where I want to. My clean and jerk, my snatch numbers aren't necessarily where I want them to be. What do I do? And their question right after that is always like, do I just lift? Do I only lift? And the problem is you have to have such a high level of GPP to be good at running long, running short, and your one at max snatch. All of that to happen at the same time. So yeah, could you bias something and lift those other things up? Yeah, the other the, the other side that you th- that you thought you were really good at is going to fall, and that's the biggest problem there. And I, I feel like every athlete goes through that at a certain point. So it's not like we're like sitting on our like high throne yeah exactly and <laughs> saying like because people go through this yeah it's you also work really hard you you know the things that like, maybe you're genetically predisposed to being a little bit better at yeah you're going to get better at those things a little bit quicker but like when you look at the athletes that don't really lift all that much and then win the lifting events you can start to understand like how they just get you have it. To do all they just it. get it. It's more about understanding that their their capacity is what they're allowed to do and what they're able to do is because they said, I'm gonna throw caution in the wind and do the exact opposite of what everything old school is like. You don't separate these things. You develop this baseline, and because your baseline is so high, you can you can say, All right, well now I can do a six weeks or eight weeks or twelve weeks of something else. That old school mentality, save that for your clothes, right? If you're looking for old school, head to sharpenaxco.com for the TBT collection that is dropping very, very soon. Rep old school on the clothes, what? not in your training Dude, modality. Dude, they didn't, they didn't get further away from you because nice. you're reading an ad. You don't I have want, to yell at I, I want them bad. to know I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. That's how I'm getting them to know I'm serious. <laughs> <God damn it. laughs> Sherb is dead serious. That was actually, use that the was code word good. unprepared to save some green. That was less bumbly than mine was. <laughs> Um, I was scared, but it was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck. I'm like sharpen the X code.com. Fuck. Sherb's going to get, get there already. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> um, okay. Here's a question. What if you get the athlete who's like, Hey, I know my goal is to go to the CrossFit games. I know that I'm two years away. I know, or I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not here this year. Maybe not even next year. Like I want a long, like the long game plan mm-hmm. and, for all, by all intent, for by all means, they're probably they. You have no reason to believe that they're not gonna stay on that program. You believe that what they're you saying believe, is true. I believe yeah. what they're saying. I believe that you will stick with it. If I work with you for three years, we could legitimately get close to that goal. Do you build like a longer term plan where it's like, is it is it a year? Do you focus on a year of seriously building that raw strength, kind of like how we used to do it, but on like a a cycle, ba- a cyclic basis to try and get ready for the open. So it's like you get, you know, 52 weeks a year to prepare for that. Now we expand that. Do you spend a whole lot of time or is it just, again, it's just biasing one thing versus the other over the course of multiple years? To me, training it's, fit, it's uh, stacking, years. it's stacking consistency there. It's the idea is, yeah, you could come up with this really awesome plan that sets you up for three years from now. And it has a gentle progression. that takes you from day one to day, whatever, 1000, 1200, whatever shit the number it is for three years from now. And that could make a lot of sense, but like for that athlete, What's going to help them the most in the long long term is, again, what Drew said a few minutes ago, is elevating your level of GPP. So as cool as it is to dive into something for an extended period of time, again, I feel like it's it's like with that carrot on a stick. It's too tempting to go off and say, all right, I'm going to be a weightlifter now. Or I'm going to go only into marathons. When you have that, rather than just talking about raising your GPP and maybe see, like I said, biasing things for short periods of the year versus like a zero to three years, it just feels to me like that plan is 
so like idealistic. It's a great idea, but it probably won't pan out for you because things come up like, you know, you get girlfriends, you get married, you get injured, you get a new job, your stress level change, you have children. There are so many different factors that would derail that plan that for someone to sit down and go, all right, I'm going to etch out day one to, to three years from now. Like to me, that's a cool idea, but the execution to me doesn't seem like it's going to be a, something that's realistic to follow through on. Yeah, it's the, like writing add five pounds a week to your back squat for three years <laughs> for, for 150 weeks and well, by the... by this time you should be doing five by five at 840 pounds it's an old like, fable where they ancient. carry the you Fox. you carry the cow every day so you pick up a baby cow and you walk uh, yeah, it yeah, a mile fuck. and then it turns into a cow and you should be able to carry the cow when that's it Greek. you know weighs a thousand pounds so that's obviously not true um f for me the answer to your question is that we can bias things um without going too far. So that could be as simple as, I guess I have two answers, but that could be as simple as like, you need to lift first. You need to lift before you do your conditioning pieces or you do your aerobic piece, then you're lifting, then blah, blah, blah. Milo. I could tell you were so distracted. Right, sorry, so let I'm, get that I'm tracking. Sorry. Aggressive overload. So, so, <laughs> so essentially you're, you're doing that. But then also we talk about how there's the natural order to things and there's there are ways that you get stronger that definitely occur sort of in a specific order. And this translates more to like your deadlifts and back squats, but also you need to get those up before those other lifts are going to feel right anyways. Sure. So we're talking about things like going all the way back to starting strength and Texas method. And, you know, there are certain athletes out there that when we're doing the volume cycle, I will give them like grow legs, grow cycle. So they're literally doing four by 10, four by eight, four by six instead. Um, and there are just certain things that need to happen when you're getting stronger. And for me, I forget get some of those things from the athlete standpoint, because I've been lifting weights since I was 13 or 14 years old. Yeah. Like that's the thing that was natural to me. So a lot of those things sort of happened on their own. So if, if you're this freak athlete that's new and has quickly made your way through MFT, there's, there's, there's a chance that that lifting program, you're not really there yet. Like you haven't gone through, you know, your standard linear progression yeah. to like prove certain things to yourself. And unfortunately, what we see is athletes that struggle with their strength are the worst at following strength programs. They get like <laughs> two weeks in and they throw the papers up in the air and they say, fuck this shit. I'm going to. And I'm like, you need to pick the papers up. You, you, you're two tell weeks. Tell you how. <laughs> you know, you're two weeks in. It's like, how is this happening? And I, and I always, it's, it's like. There is no, you didn't have a gimmick or a trick that got you your 632K and you didn't have a gimmick or a trick that got you to this place or to that place. Why do you think that a couple weeks in this magical program would turn you in the athlete that you wanted to be when it's, it could take a year? Like that's, that's really challenging for people who are super like well-rounded other than that one glaring weakness. Like we see it all the time with strict handstand pushups. I could fix anyone's strict handstand pushups if they would be patient for a year. But that's such a challenge for so many people. It's funny. I was just reading a book, um, Breathe by James Nestor, same exact thing. They're talking about some of the habits to be able to be comfortable with like these breathing habits and how you can elevate your temperature and whatnot. It's like everybody wants to be this person, but you get to breathe in like a cave for 30 years by yourself. Are you going to breathe by yourself in a cave for 30 years? And right. the answer for most people is like, nah, yo, I did it for two minutes and I, I gave up. And like, that I think that like the the concept, so to my question and both of your answers said that, Sherb, you kind of alluded to like, oh, the athlete needs to, the consistent, consistency needs to be there. If I'm going to build a three-year program and you're, you know, you're three months behind, like what was the point? Or I missed so many things, like what was the point? And Drew, your your argument is like, well, we, we can't it's it's more like that you can't kind of jump ahead of where you're supposed to be right the we're not we're not giving people flack for for not having the attention span to to you know to pay attention to a program nor are we are we giving them flack for trying to skip ahead it's more just like oh, any any level of consistency and commitment is probably going to elevate your entire game and especially with crossfit you it, 
like we've said, it's kind of a fool's errand to think that you can just focus on one thing, come back to the same fitness level you had before, but now that one thing has jumped up and caught up with everything else. It's it's just not, that's not how it works. That's where that like little bits of biasing comes in. We've we've had some, this, like people can take their guesses, but we've had some competitors, companies like ours in the past that don't exist anymore, or if they do exist, I'm not sure that they exist. And, and those oftentimes tried to pull these things off. Okay, so like, you have your 10 K run plan. You have your back squat plan. That's like, you know, low bar and there's no skill transference or whatever. And then you're going to do 30 muscle ups for time once a week until that improves. And I think where this comes from is so many of us started out in that traditional strength and conditioning place. And you want to be able to draw these like beautiful lines that connect all of these things. But when there's six or seven, aspects that came together to turn you into that thing, you know, that line, it's not just a straight line. It's not, I was here and I am here now. It's this crazy spider web that, you know, goes out and comes back in to say, this is, you know, who I've created now. So again, like this is a lot of this is experience speaking to say that we thought that that might work you know, in 2009 (laughs) and we have been there personally as an athlete or commiserated with an athlete that's been going through this. And it's just unfortunate that what it takes to this, like, I'm sort of glad that this episode has taken this turn, but it's, it's just another level, a different brand of patience that it takes to really bridge those gaps that you're looking to do. I mean, like, I can't tell you how often I will Me personally, I will PR a lift, a movement or something, having not focused on it. Where the fuck did that come from? Yeah, it's like (laughs) you, you, when I think athletes get more, are more likely to get upset because it's like, oh, I've been following like this very specific thing to focus on this, this very specific thing. And they, they didn't realize that all of that work helped something else, but maybe didn't reveal itself in that very specific thing they're working on. Right. It's like you're, your body didn't think of that like as wasted effort. Like you didn't like, just because you didn't PR on that one day doesn't mean like all of that shit went to waste. There is literally a zillion, one zillion other variables that could have caused that. And like the one kind of like thing I'll say to wrap up a little bit is a lot of this stuff is not intuitive. It's actually like kind of backwards. It's like, Oh, I, I want to get, yeah, my snatch and my clean and jerk are low relative to where I want to be. I bet like, what would the logical person say? Like, I need to work on my snatch and clean and jerk. And that's, that's perfectly reasonable, but that's why we try to convince you that that's not the case because it's not necessarily for a CrossFitter. Right. A second day of snatch or clean and jerk is not the same as (laughs) you're not a weightlifter. (laughs) Yeah. I I think that you explain this point like pretty brilliantly to one of our coaches here who was saying that like he thought if he got stronger prior to the open that he would do better in the open because his strength held him back. And it's like a, a great example is the double under toe to bar, heavy, clean ladder that occurs. Good doggy. I think it's happened on twice, but like, yeah, you, you want to be strong enough to move the heavy bar, but if you don't have the conditioning to touch the barbell or you need to do one, and then take a two minute rest in between, like, cool, man, you're strong, but you're not fit. And that's what you need to do well at this thing. And it's, you know, in the guise of the, the sport that we're talking about right now, like, they, they want to be able to say, all right, I want to get better at something. And, you know, you just said, yeah, you might do a whole phase of a aerobic C2 work and then not see the benefit occur on your retest of, you know, the Katahdin stage. But guess what? When you come back around to next open and you're able to cycle a barbell at a faster rate, like instead of doing one rep every seven seconds, you can do it every four seconds. That is evident. That is your bike work that you put it in, you know, a couple months ago, show, you know, rearing its head again and saying, guess what? It did help you, bud. It just didn't help you when you thought it would. Yeah, I mean, this this reminds me of like the difference between CrossFitters and like a powerlifter or a weightlifter where they often write programs based on what they call a training max, where your one rep max is actually for training is actually 90%, 90%. of your max. Whereas a CrossFitter, if, if on retest, they don't hit 101 to 110%, they consider it a like gigantic failure. They've <laughs> yeah. wasted all of their time. I have never PR to lift when there wasn't a reason to PR a lift. If you have the ability to go through while you're warming up and hit a smooth 90%, 
You're a fucking monster. Fuck if yeah. you can do that whenever the hell you want, first of all, it's way more applicable to what we do. And, and second of all, like save it. Like not every single lifting session and Metcon and whatever needs to be your 100%. You bury yourself. Yeah, you should know what your 100% is in training versus your 100% is in testing. But dri driving yourself into the ground because you think every single thing that you do is a competition is just not going to work. Like if you hit your old PR, but it's smooth versus like you, you find, you know, an, an old video of the hump and dump and the, you know, just like the ugliest my lift technique. you've ever seen. <laughs> and then you hit, hit the same weight smooth. Use my Instagram handle. That's, <laughs> that's at hump and dump. That's a victory. That's, <laughs> that's, a that, that's a huge victory to be able to do that. So like save this massive PR that you did build over the course of a phase for a later date. So you're just saying it's into, it's not intuitive. Like the, you'd be like, Oh, Black and white, I did better, yes or no. But like what you were saying, you have to read into these things. And you know, I think we talk about all the time with athletes and understanding experience is that some of this stuff's subjective. It's not obvious I put five more pounds on the bar. It's, hey, I was able to do my six by three easier today, or I was able to hit a set of 10 muscle ups smoother than I ever have in my life. And that type of stuff is the higher level thinking we want athletes to have when they go into the gym and they say, all right, what can I get better at? They focus their energy on that one thing and then they go ask themselves, you know, did I feel like I got better? Did it not feel better? And if it didn't, like, what can I do to make it better? That's the type of intuition that we want people to, you know, like latch their claws onto rather than just being like, it's not heavier. I didn't do one more. I didn't go five seconds faster. Right. Like what, why should you PR on October 7th? Anybody give a fuck? No one cares. Like, <laughs> like in, in that, that's the part where it's like, like. I could count on the volume squat cycle adding, honestly, every single year, 10 to 20 pounds to my back squat. Did it happen during retest week? Literally not once. Never. Five, that many reps over the course of a six to seven week period. Like I'm the kind of person who responds better to higher intensity, lower volume. So yep. like the fact that that was pushing sort of the bounds of what I could handle for volume, my central nervous system needed like a month to recover from <laughs> that. And it's hard to swallow after putting in that work and you're, you're retesting with friends and you know, you might lose, but then you go do a local comp and you PR by 20, 30 pounds. And that's when you're supposed to PR. Like that's when it actually matters. That's when like things are going to go a lot better. Yeah. I think the, and like the, the training max thing is an interesting point that you brought up because I I use that for myself, but also any of the athletes out in the, like our affiliate athletes, and granted that's a little bit different population, but this, the idea is still the same. Like if, if you're focusing, if you're maybe biasing something else, but at any given point, you can hit 90% of your all-time best, which most of our athletes can just because their fitness level is high. Like- you're doing fucking great. Yes. You didn't lose any strength. No. Like it literally like, okay, yeah, well back squat, like say it's your back squat. Like, yeah, usually I can like my all time best is 400. And if I, if I hit, tell myself if I hit like 365 or 350, like on any given day, like fuck, I'm good to go. Yeah. And you tell that to somebody and it's like, okay, you really want to get that thing up. All right. We'll squat like once a week and, and it'll get back up to where it was for, to make you feel better. But like the lifting stuff, especially like, yeah, I that 90% rule for me is like even like 85%, especially yeah. if you're like a super fast twitch athlete where that high CNS demand is there, like 85 or 90% of your your best on any given day, like you don't need to bias any anything. Right. You know? And you, you can't conjure up the demons at like lunchtime on a Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. Like, but you also wouldn't want to cuz you can't do that nonstop. You can't go to the well over and over and over. So, um this this topic has definitely taken a little bit of a turn, but these like it's the point of the show is to like sort of bring up the like the like connections that yeah. we can make here. Because basically this this idea for this episode came from multiple athletes asking me, like, hey, can we try this? Hey, can we do this? And if I can get a as a coach, if I can get a higher level of buy-in and I'm only trading, if I get Let's say I get 30% more buy-in and I'm only trading 10% of the plan for that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a little bit of a bias there. It's not a big deal. Um, for me, 
coming all the way back around. I feel like my my final thoughts are, and you can probably guess that this is towards the end of the show because Sherb just ran out. Um, he is coaching <laughs> class. So um, really just to, to establish how far off the path you want to go. And then if you're okay with the consequences, if you're not as far in your journey as you want to be. Um, and to be perfectly honest, like talking about life lessons earlier with the black and white thing, overcorrecting is almost always a bad idea. Like you, you're a pretty even keel person, but there's this new shiny big idea that's out there. It's a new way of thinking. It's a new, this It's a new, that we as human beings need to learn to incorporate those things into our arsenal instead of just, that's who I am now. I, I fucking flip yeah. the page. I'm a, I'm a new person now. And this is the only thing that I do. And it's funny that I say that because that was always me when I was younger. It was always like, I am a baseball player. Nope. I'm a snowboarder. Nope. <laughs> I'm a crossfitter. Like, and when you realize that you can be a baseball player, a snowboarder and a crossfitter, life is usually typically a yeah, little bit better. Great. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah. My final thoughts are eh, the, I wanted to kind of get to this, but it's actually a good place to have the final thought is that you you kind of alluded to previous programs or even like we still get the question like, Hey, I need to get my back squat stronger. Should I follow small of, and then do like, and then just do the conditioning stuff. And it's like, well, well, one, no, probably not. Um, but unless Ricky two, Gerard is your pharmacist, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the, uh, I would say like the first step is kind of analyzing just how far off you are. And that probably involves asking somebody else, uh, specifically a coach, uh, a good one, if you can find one. Um, but it, and then it becomes like, okay, is the program that I'm on now offering me this? And maybe the first step is just putting more focus, like in intensity in that specific thing. Like, is it like every single day we've got at least one, usually two lifting pieces. So if you're saying that I need to get stronger, like one of them's probably mandatory, the other's optional. So we don't need a separate program. Maybe you just need to focus a little bit more intensely on that, whether it's like the warm up, the recovery, the execution, making sure you have enough rest between your sets, like, like all of those things, like those things are, that's like 80% of it. Like I could write any, like either of us could write anybody an eight week back squat program. That's going to get their one rep max stronger, but right. it's not, it's not like, that's not the point. It's, are you focusing enough on the things that you actually need to get better at? Because again, th this goes to like the volume versus intensity thing. Like, yeah, if you're telling me you're, you're struggling, like you want to get fitter, like, okay, step one is try harder. Like you probably don't have, maybe you don't have the intensity in your workouts and you're trying to cram more volume down your throat or it's like, yeah, the lifting side, maybe I just need to focus a little bit more on the, the positioning and my snatch and my clean and jerk and like drop the weight a little bit and focus on those things. Like, and, and the point of all of that was, is that follow a program, um, follow misfit athletics preferably and adjust your focus accordingly. You don't need to don't stack programs on top of programs because then you have just created your own program. It's not the same thing. Cause we write our you're strength taking advice from yourself on something that you're not currently doing so well at. Right. <laughs> yes. In a program that you didn't actually originally write. Right. So you're, you're, when you kind of think about it like that, like, Oh, I am, I am the coach now. Like I'm going to piecemeal <laughs> all these things together. Like, no, like start by maybe considering like, could I just focus a little bit more of my time and energy on this one specific thing without having to change anything else before you start to go into like the, all right, I need to, I need a very specific program because, and then like you said, if you're going to do that, you need to be accepting of the kind of the consequences of where your fitness turns one way or the other. Right. And we, we send out, um, for, for everyone that's already a subscriber on the website, um, you probably know this or hopefully if it's not in your spam folder, but anyone else, we send out an email once a month to our subscribers that typically covers, you know, a little, a little blurb about the programming, a little blurb about where we think your mindset should be at and how you should be thinking about your skill work. And the one that has either gone out today or is, is going out today, um, you know, I wrote about exactly what you just talked about. Just this idea that so many people struggle with the volume and intensity thing. And 
you go in and you know, you grab a marker every single time you're about to do a workout and you write it down on the board and you stare at it and you bring yourself into this, like, like you're boxing yourself in. This is the only thing that exists that exists right now for me. And the idea that you could put the amount of effort into that one thing that you tend to sprinkle around to everything um, is such a powerful concept. And that's how you're going to figure out how much volume you need. And that's how you're also going to figure out how to attack something in a way that, you know, you're not going to let your bias take over. Cause like if I show up to class and it's five by five back squat and then row intervals, um, there's a pretty good chance that subconsciously I'm going to put everything I have into the back squat. Wonder why everyone else isn't as tired as me, you know, drenched in sweat or whatever. And then even if I wanted the rowing to go really well, like how much, how much of that gas tank that we're talking about all the time just got diverted to something that I'm already good at. Like I put all of my eggs into that basket subconsciously. And now I wonder why I'm, you know, I would call myself soft at the end of it because I couldn't mentally stay in and hold my pace the entire time. But like biologically, there is a reason for that. So like going into the day, looking at, at all of your pieces and saying, I thought I needed my own back squat program where it was actually just, I'm going to pull this piece out and I'm going to put it first and I'm going to give it everything I got. And then I'm just going to figure out the rest of the day after. Like it's, it's a powerful tool to figure out exactly what your programming should look like, but it's also a way, like we all have our biases. We all have those subconscious things. It's one of the ways to work against it. It's also, yeah. And, and that, that sort of style can also be difficult. It mean it might mean that you need to do less volume. It might mean that that takes a little bit longer than it would normally, because normally you've got your list of three or four training pieces that you're trying to get through. And it's like, I don't have time to focus on this. Well, like, if, if you're telling me that you're like, that's your answer, right? There's your answer right there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, ladies and gents, that was the unprepared podcast. Thank you again to our show sponsors. If you were as scared as I was when Sherb was yelling at you about sharpen the ax, the TBT collection, the misfit athletics TBT collection is coming out very soon. The athletes are headed back to Aromas. We thought it would be fun to reboot and have kind of a new twist on a few items that people have asked, where the heck are these? We want them back. So sharpen the use the code word unprepared. We are also brought to you by proper fuel, head to properfuel.co and use the code word misfit to save on your first order. Pure spectrum CBD, Dot com use the code word misfit and as always we are brought to you by misfit athletics and team misfit because we are misfit athletics and team misfit that's true misfitathletics.com team misfit.com both on sugar wad any of those places you go you can get a two-week free trial um I think it's really cool that we talk about this kind of stuff and we get someone's brain kind of spinning a little bit and then let them know that they have like a free opportunity to see if all this mumbo jumbo that we're spinning around actually works. Um, And you can, you can ask me to, you can slide into those DMS. Wow. He told you at the beginning that you, that you weren't allowed to. So no, you can, it's at Hunter should, which is a fun, which is a fun family troll. Instagram handle. That's why. Because your last name's not, Wood. Well, well, the funny story is that my brother. This better be funny. My, it, it's pretty good. Like my brother was the first one on Instagram. He's a little bit younger than me, and his last name is Wood. But he's his Instagram handle ends with Wood, spelt W O U L D, like oh. trying to be creative. And he was like, "You should get an Instagram." Like, and I was like, "No, I'm not getting an Instagram." And back and forth, I got an Instagram, and I was like, "Okay, all right, fine, Max, I'll troll on you." So it's Hunter should. And then our mom did the same thing and she ended her handle with could. So I'm not going to give her Instagram handle <laughs> on the internet here, but it was all slide just like into Hunter's mom. Sli- no, DMs. no. <laughs> <laughs> you slide said into the, I did not, but yeah, you can slide into those DMS too and ask me questions. Well, if you remember what the handle is, but you guys can be the judge of whether that was a funny story or not. As always, I am at misfit coach on Instagram, slide into those DMS. Let us know what you thought of this episode and, and that what joke. you would like to hear next and what you thought of Hunter's joke. You can send those DMS straight to him. We'll see you next time.